How great is God, exalted in power, majestic above all. The heavens tell of his greatness. The skies display his awesome craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. In creating the heavens, God also created the earth and formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The God of love created man and woman in his own image to have a relationship with him. And so in the beginning, they revered and honored God and lived in harmony with him. This continued until one day Satan tempted the woman to eat the forbidden fruit and she gave it to the man who also ate. In so doing, mankind rebelled against God and went their own way. As a result of this sin, Mankind was separated from God and was thrown out of the Garden of Eden. But God still loved mankind. It was never his desire to be separate from those he created. Yet how could God be holy and the source of perfect justice if he did not judge mankind for their sin? In his holy book, God reveals his plan to save the world from his judgment. One of the first to see this plan unfold was Abraham. Abraham was a righteous man whom God promised to bless and make his descendants as numerous as the sand of the sea and the stars of the sky. To test his obedience, God told Abraham to sacrifice his son as an offering to him. Abraham trusted God and sought to obey him. As he raised his knife to kill his son, the angel of the Lord stopped him. He saw that Abraham feared God and was willing to obey him. Then Abraham saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket, and he sacrificed the ram instead of his son as an offering to God. And so God showed Abraham that a lamb or similar animal was to be slain as a temporary covering for sin until God would provide his ultimate sacrifice to pay for the sins of mankind. Instead of sin separating man from God, the sacrifice would restore their relationship. The Holy Scriptures speak of one who was to come and be the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of the world 
As the ram took the place of Abraham's son, so this one who would come would take man's place so he could be forgiven. Some refer to this person as the Messiah, the one who would come and reconcile the world back to God once and for all. The prophets predicted many things in detail about the Messiah, hundreds of years before he appeared. The prophet Isaiah foretold that his birth was to be a miraculous one. A virgin would conceive a child who was to be called, in a spiritual sense, the Son of God. The prophet Micah predicted that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem while the prophet Zechariah foretold his entry into Jerusalem on a donkey and his betrayal by Judas, one of his followers. Isaiah prophesied what the Messiah would do when he came. The Lord's anointed will preach the good news to the poor, bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim freedom for the captives, and proclaim that the time has come when the Lord will save his people. So who was the Messiah? In the first century, a prophet came called Jesus. Some thought he was the one the prophet spoke about. Could this be? Did his life fulfill what was predicted of him? Was Jesus more than a prophet? What follows is his story based on eyewitness accounts as recorded in the Holy Scriptures. An actor plays the part of Jesus, and though no actor is worthy of such a role, it has been done so that we may understand and benefit from the life of Jesus. I am writing to you, dear Theophilus, an orderly account of the things that have taken place among us, so that you may know the absolute truth about everything. In the days when Caesar Augustus was emperor of Rome, and when Herod the Great was king of Judea, God sent the angel Gabriel to visit a virgin of the city of Nazareth, and the virgin's name was Mary. Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus. How can this be? I am a virgin. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So Mary traveled to a town in Judea to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who was also miraculously with child. Elizabeth! Mary! Cousin Mary! You're the most blessed of all women, and blessed is the child you will bear. For as soon as I heard your greeting, the baby within me jumped with gladness. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. Know all men of Nazareth that by command of Caesar Augustus, there will be conducted a census of the subject territories of Galilee and Judea. All men must register forthwith in the towns and cities of their ancestral birth.
and Mary went to Bethlehem in Judea to register with Joseph, her betrothed. But there was no room for them in Bethlehem, and the only lodging they could find was a humble stable. Now there were some shepherds in that part of the country who were taking care of their sheep at night, when the angel of God appeared to them, and the glory of God shone about them. This very day in David's town, your Savior was born, Christ the Lord. The shepherds hurried to see the newborn babe in the manger and were the first to spread the good news or gospel of the Virgin Mother and the Savior's birth. A week later, when the time came for the baby to be circumcised, he was given the name Jesus, and Joseph and Mary took the child to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. In the temple, there was a good and devout man who the Holy Spirit had promised would not die until he had seen the Christ. His name was Simeon. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. This child is chosen by God. May you both be blessed. And when they had completed all their duties according to the law of Moses, they left Jerusalem and returned to Nazareth. When Jesus was 12 years old, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. But when they started back home, thinking that the boy was with them, Jesus stayed behind. They returned to the city looking for him, and on the third day found him in the temple sitting with the rabbis and elders. Whose child is this who asks such questions? He's from Nazareth. We thought he had left with us. Please forgive him his zeal. All who heard him were amazed. Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been terribly worried trying to find you. How is it that you looked for me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? And he came with them to Nazareth and increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and with man. In the fifteenth year of the rule of the Emperor Tiberius, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, and Herod, the ruler of Galilee, and Annas and Caiaphas, the high priests, the word of God came to John in the desert, and he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Turn away from your sins and be baptized and God will forgive your sins. As it is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, someone is shouting in the desert, get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him to travel. Every valley must be filled up every hill and mountain leveled off. Winding roads must be made straight and the rough paths 
made smooth, and all mankind will see God's salvation. What shall we do? Yes, tell us, You brood of vipers! What do you want us to do? Whoever has two shirts must give one to the man who has none. Yes, that's right. That's what we have to do. And whoever has food must share it. Teacher, we are tax collectors. What shall we do? We know that well enough. Don't collect more than is legal. And what about us? What are we to do? Don't take money from anyone by force. And don't accuse anyone falsely. Be content with your pay. Tell us, are you the Christ? Yes, are you the Christ? I baptize you with water, but someone is coming who is much greater than I am. I'm not good enough even to untie his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He has his winnowing shovel with him to thresh out all the grain and gather the wheat into his barn. spirit came down upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. When Jesus began his work, he was about 30 years old. He returned from the Jordan full of the Holy Spirit and was led by the Spirit into the desert where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. In all this time, he ate nothing. devil said to him, If you are God's son, order this stone to turn into bread. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil took him up and showed him in a second all the kingdoms of the world. I will give you all this power and all this wealth. It has all been handed over to me and I can give it to anyone I choose. All this will be yours then, if you worship me. It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and set him on the highest point of the temple. If you are God's son, throw yourself down from here. For the scripture says God will order his angels to take good care of you. It also says they will hold you up with their hands so that not even your feet will be hurt on the stones. The scripture says you shall not put the Lord your God to the test.
and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath, he went as usual to the synagogue. And was called upon to read a portion of the prophet Isaiah. Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and announce that the time has come when the Lord will save his people. This passage of scripture has come true today, as you heard it being read. The scripture come true? But only the Messiah can fulfill that promise. Sure we know. Doubtless you will quote the proverb to me. Physician, heal thyself. You'll also say to me, do hear the things in your own hometown that we heard were done in Capernaum. I tell you this, no prophet is ever welcome in his hometown. They meant to throw him over the cliff, but he walked through the middle of the crowd and went his way. And came to Capernaum, a city of Galilee. The Roman occupation of the nation was in evidence everywhere, and the people longed for the Messiah to free them from the tyranny. Peace be with you. And you, Master. Will your boat bear me, Simon? Why not? Once there were two men who went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood apart by himself and prayed, I thank you, God, that I am not greedy or dishonest or an adulterer like everybody else. I thank you that I am not like that tax collector over there. I fast twice a week, and I give you one-tenth of all my income. But the tax collector stood at a distance and would not even raise his face to heaven, but beat upon his breast and said, God, have pity on me, a sinner. I tell you, the tax collector, not the Pharisee, was in the right with God when he went home. For the man who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. Push the boat out further to the deep water. Then you and your partners let down your nets for a catch. Oh, master, we worked hard all night long and caught nothing. 
But if you say so, I'll let down the nets. James! John! Away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Don't be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. You know not what manner of spirit you are, for the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. He shall prosper in his purpose on Babylon, and his arm will be against the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken and called him. I have brought him, and he will prosper in his way. Who among them has declared these things? The Lord loves him. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. I beg you to save my only daughter. Jesus. Sir, have mercy. She's only 12 years old and, and dying. Please, please come with me. Cyrus, I'm sorry. Jesus! Your daughter has died. Don't bother the teacher any longer. Don't be afraid. Only believe and she will be well. something to eat. I charge you. Tell no one what has happened here. And after this, he saw a publican named Matthew Levi sitting at the toll gate for the receipt of the customs.
And Jesus went up a hill to pray and spent the whole night there praying to God. And when day came, he greeted the twelve of them whom he named apostles. Simon, whom he also named Peter. And Andrew, his brother. James. and John. Philip. And Bartholomew. Matthew. And Thomas. James, the son of Alphaeus. and Simon called Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which was the traitor. Blessed are you, Paul, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you and reject you and insult you and say you are evil, all because of the Son of Man. Be glad when that happens and dance for joy, because a great reward is kept for you in heaven. For their ancestors did the very same things to the prophets. What do you mean that's all you've got? How Price terrible for you who are rich now. You have had your easy life. <laughs> he doesn't want to be rich. He must be mad. How terrible for you who laugh now. For you shall mourn and weep. How terrible when all men speak well of you. For their ancestors said the very same things about the false prophets. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. If anyone strikes you on the one cheek, let him hit the other one also. And if someone takes away your coat, let him have your shirt as well. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if someone takes what is yours, do not ask for it back again. Do for others. Only what you would have others do for you. If you love only the people who love you, why should you receive a blessing? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, why should you receive a blessing? Even sinners do that. How could he touch her? How could he talk to her? No. 
love your enemies and do good to them and lend expecting nothing back. And then you will have a great reward for you will be sons of the Most High God. For he is good to the ungrateful and to the wicked. Be merciful, just as your father is merciful. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Lead us in thy path, O oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Give, and it will be given to you. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. One blind man cannot lead another. If he does, they will both fall into a ditch. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but pay no attention to the log in your own eye? Guide us, O Master. We need you now, Lord. How happy is the mother that bore you and nursed you. <laughs> Rather, how happy are those who hear the word of God and obey it. I'd like to know this man. Do you think he might be the Messiah? <laughs> this Pharisee invited Jesus to have dinner with him. And Jesus went to his house and sat down to eat. Come along, children. Off you go. You heard me. Go. Then up to all the mischief going, but good, son. What is she doing here? I don't Two men who owed money to a moneylender. One owed him 500 silver coins, the other 50. Neither of them can pay him back, so he cancelled the debts of both. Which one then will love him more? I suppose that it would be the one who was forgiven more. You are right. You see this woman? I came into your home. You gave me no water for my feet. She has washed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You did not welcome me with a kiss. But since I came, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You provided no olive oil for my head. Yet she has anointed my feet with perfume. I tell you then, the great love she has shown proves that her many sins are forgiven. But whoever is forgiven little shows only a little love. Your sins are forgiven you. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. I... Jesus traveled teaching the good news of the kingdom of God. And the 12 disciples went with him. And so did some women who had been healed of evil spirits. Mary, who was called Magdalene. Joanna, whose husband, Chusa, was steward in Herod's court. And Susanna.
But Herod, the Roman appointed ruler of Galilee, threw John the Baptist in prison because he had condemned his marriage to his brother's wife. Well, as we arrived at the gate of Nain, a funeral procession came out. The dead was the only son of a widow. When Jesus saw her, his heart was filled with compassion. He, he touched the coffin and said, Young man, get up, I tell you. Then the dead man sat up, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Ask him, say, are you the one John said was going to come? Or should we expect someone else? sent us to ask if you are the one who is going to come or should we expect someone else go back and tell John what you have seen and heard the blind can see the lame can walk how happy are those who have no doubts about me onto my shoulder can you see now? I can see Jesus. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he scattered the grain, some of it fell by the path and was trodden on. And the birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on rocky ground. And when the plant sprouted, they withered away because they had no moisture. And some seeds fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up with the plants and choked them. And some seeds fell in good soil. And the plants grew and bore grain, 100 grains each. Master, why do you speak in parables whenever a crowd is near? The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you. But to others it comes by means of parables, so they may look but not see and listen but not understand. This is what the parable means. The seed is the word of God. The seeds that fell along the path stand for those who hear. But the devil comes and takes the message away from their hearts in order to keep them from believing and being saved. The seeds that fell on rocky ground stand for those who hear the message and receive it gladly. But they have no root. They believe only for a while. And when the time of testing comes, they fall away. The seeds that fell among thorns stand for those who hear. But the worries and riches and pleasures of this life crowd in and choke them. And their fruit never ripens. And the seeds that fell in good soil Stand for those who hear the message and retain it in a good and obedient heart. And they persist until they bear fruit. No one lights a lamp and covers it with a bowl. Or puts it under a bed. Instead, he puts it on the stand. So that the people may see the light as they come in. Whatever is hidden away will be brought out into the open. And whatever is covered up will be found and brought to light. Be careful, then, how you listen. Because whoever has will be given more. But he who has not will have taken away from him even the little he thinks he has. Teacher, your mother and brothers are standing outside. They want to see you. My mother and brothers are those who hear the word of God and obey it.
One day, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples and said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. And as they were sailing, he fell asleep. Where is your faith? And they sailed on over to Gadara, which is across the lake from Galilee. with me I beg you don't punish me what is your name <sighs> Legion Lord we beg you do not send us into the abyss let us enter into the herd of swine huh? <laughs> hey! Come back! Stop! Stop! And the demons went out of the man and into the pigs. Follow you wherever you go. Let me come with you. Go back home and tell what God has done for you. Master, 
send the people away so that then they can go to the villages and farms around here and find food and lodging. This is a lonely place. You yourselves give them something to eat. But all we have are five loaves and two fish. Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who bringeth forth bread from the earth. Who do the crowd say I am? Some say that you are John the Baptist. Others say that you were Elijah. While others say that one of the prophets of long ago has come back to life. What about you? Who do you say I am? You are God's Messiah. You shall tell no man of this. The Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected. He will be put to death. But three days later will be raised to life. Come with me. I will follow you, Master. But first, let me go and say goodbye to my family. Anyone who starts to plough and then keeps looking back is of no use for the kingdom of God. If anyone wants to come with me, he must forget himself. Take up his cross every day and follow me. For whoever would save his own life will lose it. And whoever would lose his life for my sake will save it. What will it profit a man if he gain the whole earth and lose his own soul? If any man is ashamed of me and of my teachings, then the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and the holy angels. I assure you, there are some here who will not die until they have seen the kingdom of God. Then Jesus took John and James and Peter with him and went up a hill to pray. <sighs> 
And while he was praying, the aspect of his face changed its appearance, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, two men were talking with him. They were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in heavenly glory. You will fulfill God's purpose. You will die in Jerusalem. James, John. As they were leaving, Peter said to Jesus, Master, how good it is that we are here. We will make three tents, one for you. As Peter spoke, one a cloud Moses, came and overshadowed them. And one for Elijah. And the disciples were afraid. And a voice came from the cloud saying, this is my son, the chosen one. Listen to him. Teacher, teacher, I beg you, look upon my son. Please, please help him. For he's my only child. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Oh, faithless and perverse generation. How long am I to be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. Teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. When you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks will receive. And he who seeks will find. And the door will be open to anyone who knocks. <laughs> Would any of you who are fathers give to your son a snake when he asks for a fish? Or a scorpion when he asks for an egg? As bad as you are, you know how to give good things to your children. 
How much more, then, will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? I tell you this. Take no thought in your life for what you shall eat, nor for your body what you shall wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap, have neither storehouse nor barn, yet God feeds them. Of how much more worth are you than the birds? Which of you, by being anxious, can add to the length of your life? You cannot do such a small thing. Why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like a single one of them. If God, who clothes the wild grass today, which tomorrow is thrown onto a fire, how much more sure is he to clothe you Oh, you of little faith. Make our faith greater. If you had faith as big as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, pull yourself up by the roots and plant yourself in the sea, and it would obey you. Temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to him by whom they come. It would be better for him if a stone were put about his neck and he were cast into the sea, than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. What is the kingdom of God like? It is like this. A man takes a grain of mustard seed and plants it in his field. The plant grows and becomes a tree, and the birds make their nests in its branches. I'm not sure what he's talking about. <laughs> Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and other outcasts? <laughs> People who are well do not need a doctor, but only those who are sick. I have not come to call respectable people to repent, but outcasts. <laughs> Tell us again about the kingdom. Is there anything else? Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell all your belongings and give the money to the poor. Provide for yourselves purses that don't wear out and save your riches in heaven where they will never decrease. Because no thief can get to them and no moth can destroy them. For your heart will always be where your riches are. Woman, you are free from your sickness. Look! Look, she's cured! It's a miracle! It's a miracle. Look, she's cured! Come and see! Praise, Praise to the Lord! Good keep you, Rabbi. There are six days in which we should work. So come on one of those days to be healed, but not on the Sabbath. You hypocrites! Any one of you would untie his ox or his donkey and take it out from the stall to give it water on the Sabbath. Now here is this descendant of Abraham whom Satan has kept in bonds these 18 years. Should she not be released on the Sabbath?
good teacher. What must I do to receive eternal life? Why do you call me good? No one is good save God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not commit murder. Do not accuse anyone falsely. Respect your mother and your father. Ever since I was young, I have obeyed all these commandments. There is still one more thing you need to do. You must sell all you have and give the money to the poor, and you will have riches in heaven. Then come and follow me. But we are merchants. Wealthy. How hard it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. It is harder for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God than for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Who then can be saved? What is impossible for man is possible for God. Exactly where will this be? God's kingdom. The kingdom of God does not come in such a way as to be seen. No one will say, look, there it is or here it is. Because the kingdom of God is within you. The time will come when you will wish that you could see one of the days of the Son of Man. But you will not see it. As the lightning flashes across the sky and lights it up from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be on his day. But first he must suffer much and be rejected by the people of this day. It is easier for heaven and earth to disappear than for the smallest detail of the law to be done away with. For I tell you, many prophets and kings desired to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. What should we do? What do the scriptures say? How do you interpret them? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. You're right. Do this and you'll live. Who is my neighbor? Not those soldiers. Yes. What about Caesar? Gentiles. There was once a man going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when robbers attacked him, stripped him, beat him, leaving him half dead. It so happened that a priest came that way. When he saw the man, he walked by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite also came there, went over and looked at the man, and then walked by on the other side. But a Samaritan who was traveling on that road came across the man, and when he saw him, his heart was filled with pity. He went over to the man, poured oil and wine on his wounds and bandaged them. Then he put him on his own animal and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. The next day he gave the innkeeper two silver coins, and he told him to look after the man. And when I come back, he said, I will pay you whatever else you spend on him. Which one of these three acted like a neighbor towards the man who was attacked by the robbers? The one who was kind to him. <laughs> you then do the same. <laughs> ah. Suffer the little children to come unto me and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. Whoever welcomes this child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For he who is least among you all is the greatest. Jesus! Oh! 
Jesus! <laughs> Son of David, have mercy on me! What do you want me to do for you? I want to see you again. And see. Your faith has made you well. I can see. I can see. I can see. This man truly is a prophet. My lord and master, yes, save me. Hey, I'm oh, my is he oh, oh. oh, Lord, save us, save us, the Lord. Show us the true way, Lord. Please, yes, 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 stop. Move out of the way. That's the tax collector. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry down, Zacchaeus. For I must stay in your house today. My house? I want to stay in his house. give half of my belongings to the poor and if I have cheated anyone I will pay him back four times as much <laughs> <laughs> A tax collector paying back his taxes. Impossible! <laughs> Salvation has come to this house today. For this man also is a descendant of Abraham. The son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Listen. We are going to Jerusalem. Everything the prophets wrote about the Son of Man will come true. He will be handed over to the Gentiles. They will mock him and treat him shamefully and spit upon him. He will be whipped and killed. But on the third day, he will rise. And Jesus resolutely took the road for Jerusalem. your disciples to be quiet. I tell you, if they were to be quiet, the stones themselves would begin shouting.
If only on this your day you had known the path for peace, but you have failed to see it. The days will come when your enemies build ramparts to surround you and hem you in, pressing hard from every side. And within these walls they will destroy you. You and your children. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. Understand that many have already hailed him as king. A king? <laughs> a king of beggars, whores, and thieves. We've seen his like before. They come, they make their claims, they go. They're forgotten. Don't be blind. His following is growing by the day. The people admire him. And think he is a king. Let me give you a warning. If this man should threaten the peace further, I shall look to you. Perhaps he's right. It's time we confronted the Galilean. And as the hypocritical section of the scribes and the Pharisees came increasingly under his attack, so his following among the Jews grew. But so did the opposition from those he condemned. It's very little. Only a mite. Can't you give more? I tell you! But this poor widow put in more than all the others. For the others offered their gifts from what they had to spare of their riches. But she, poor as she is, put in all the living that she had. Tell us, what right do you have to say these things? Who gave you such right? Now let me ask you a question. Tell me, did John's right to baptize come from God or from man? What shall we say? If we were to say from God, he will say, why then? Don't you believe, John? But if we say from man, this whole crowd here will stone us. They're all convinced that John was a prophet. We don't know where it came from. Neither will I tell you then by what right I do these things. There was once a man who planted a vineyard, rented it out to tenants, and then left home for a long time. When the time came to gather the grapes, he sent a slave to the tenants to receive from them his share of the harvest. But the tenants beat the slave and sent him back without a thing. So he sent another slave. But the tenants beat him too 
treated him shamefully and sent him back without a thing. Then he sent a third slave. But the tenants wounded him too and threw him out. Then the owner of the vineyard said to himself, what shall I do? I will send my own dear son. Surely they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him coming, they said to one another, this is the owner's son. Let's kill him and his property will be ours. What happened? Tell us more. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants? He will come and kill those men and give the vineyard over to other tenants. What then does this scripture mean? The stone which the builders rejected as worthless turned out to be the most important of all. Everyone who falls on that stone will be cut to pieces. And if that stone falls on someone, it will crush him to dust. Teacher, we know that what you say and teach is right. We know that you pay no attention to man's status, but to teach the truth about God's will for man. Tell us, is it against our law for us to pay taxes to the Roman emperor or not? Careful, Lord! He'll try to trick you! Show me a silver coin. Whose face and name are these on it? Caesar! Then render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Now the festival of unleavened bread drew near, which is called the Passover. Jesus sent Simon, Peter, and John ahead to prepare the Passover meal. so much to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will never eat it until it is given its full meaning in the kingdom of God. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who bringeth forth fruit from the vine. Take this and share it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who bringeth forth bread from the earth. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man must die as God has determined, but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. It can't be. It can't be. It can't be. It can't be. Not possible. Name the traitor, Lord. The greatest one among you must be like the youngest. And the leader must be like the servant. 
Or who is greater? The one who sits down to eat? Or the one who serves? The one who sits down, of course. But I am among you as one who serves. You have stayed with me all through my trials. And just as my father has given me the right to rule, so I will give you the same right. You will eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And you will sit on thrones to rule over the 12 tribes of Israel. Then there is no traitor. Simon, Simon, behold. Satan has desired to test all of you. To separate the good from the bad as a farmer separates the wheat from the chaff. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back to me, you must strengthen your brethren. Lord, I am ready to go to prison with you and to die with you. I tell you, you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day before that you shall thrice deny that you know me. When I sent you out without purse or bag or shoes, did you lack anything? No. Not a thing. But now whoever has a purse or a bag must take it. And whoever has no sword must sell his mantle and buy one. For I tell you, it is written in the scriptures and he was reckoned among the transgressors. And what was written about me is coming true. Look, here are two swords, Lord. That is enough. And the council of the elders met to see how they might rid themselves of Jesus. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. Pray that you may not enter into temptation. Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And an angel from heaven appeared to him to strengthen him. And his sweat was as though it were great drops of blood falling to the ground. sleeping. Get up and pray that you do not fall into temptation.
Judas. Is it with a kiss that you betray the Son of Man? Lord, shall we smite with the sword? Come on, arrest him. Enough of this. Come with swords and clubs as though I were an outlaw. I was with you every day in the temple and you did not try to arrest me. But this is your hour to act when the power of darkness rules. Arrest him. Guard him well. Here's a cloak worn by King. Tell us what's going to happen. I salute your royal. You're gonna save us, Your Majesty. You're gonna save us. What are you gonna save us from? This man, too, was with Jesus. Woman, I don't even know him. I saw them together. with Jesus because he's also a Galilean. Go away. <laughs> I don't know what, what you're talking about. with the greatness of thy power. Thou, who did forgive our fathers when they rebelled against thy word. Thou, who was angry with them, thou didst destroy them through thy love for them and for thy covenant's sake. Thou didst spare them. <laughs> uh. 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 Who hit you? Guess. Prophesy. Who will hit you next? <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, I said. Bring him before the council. Move. Uh.
Tell us, are you the Messiah? If I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I ask you a question, you will not answer me. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right side of Almighty God. Are you then the Son of God? You say that I am. Who gives him the authority to break your Guilty. We ourselves have heard what he said. We will take him to Pilate. Move. They took him before Pontius Pilate, the most vicious of all Roman procurators, alone responsible for the crucifixion of thousands. And what do you want here at this hour of the morning? We caught this man perverting our people. He caused an uproar in the temple market. What will be his punishment? Sentence him. I see no reason to condemn this man, no reason. We found him guilty, telling them not to pay taxes to the emperor, claiming himself the Messiah, a king. A king? Are you the king of the Jews? So you say. He began in Galilee and now he has come here. In Galilee? Is this man a Galilean? In that case, we'll let Herod deal with him. He's still here in Jerusalem, isn't he? Take him to Herod. Who is it that you say you are? those you call your disciples? It is said by many you can perform signs. Do something for me. My lord, he has been corrupting all the people. He calls himself the king. This man? A king? <laughs> Your Majesty. Mark him well. Send him back to Pilate. This is his province. This man has done nothing to deserve death. So I will have him scourged and let him go. 
You are obliged to release one man to us at this festival. Release to us Barabbas. 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 And away with this man. Give us the You, you, What's your name? Simon of Cyrene, sir. Step over here. Cut the ropes! <laughs> you you're showing pity, eh? You! Carry it! Come on, move! for yourselves and for your children. For if such things as these take place when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Oh, we will pray for you.
Saved others. Let him save himself. This is no ordinary mystic's garment. <laughs> Here's no, we don't. Don't go, don't tear it. I'll tell you what. Let's play for this. All right, we play. The first one to throw a six. Right, turn the lights. Come on. Come on. Hey, you lucky devil. Hey, Marcus, you won again. Save yourself if you were the king of the Jews. Sire, save yourself and and us. Don't you fear God? He received the same sentence you did, but he has done no wrong. Remember me, Jesus, when you, when you come as king. I promise you, today you will be in paradise with me. It was now about the sixth hour, and a darkness came over all the land until the ninth hour.
the veil of the temple was torn right down the middle. In thy hands, I commit my spirit. Glory be to God. Certainly, this was a righteous man. Joseph of Arimathea, a righteous member of the council who had not consented to this deed, obtained permission from Pontius Pilate to lay Jesus' body in a tomb before the Sabbath commenced at sundown. I would like to take his body. You can take it. Forgive us. We are following the body of our Lord. All are welcome. But come, the Sabbath is approaching. Very early on the Sunday morning, they came to the tomb, carrying the spices they had prepared. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember what he said to you while he was in Galilee. The Son of Man will be handed over to sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day rise again. to us, angels shining like the sun, and said to us, why do you look for the living among the dead? It's true. Believe us. Believe us. We saw them. Go and see for yourself. The tomb was empty. Our Lord was gone. Peter, you must believe us.
Jesus' blessing. Oh, the Lord has risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. What? We didn't recognize him. Not on the road. But when he broke bread, then we knew. At Emmaus. How strange he should go there. Uh, oh. Oh. Peace be with you. <laughs> Why are you troubled? Why are these doubts coming up in your minds? Look, at my hands and my feet, and see that it is I myself. Feel me and you will know. For a spirit has not flesh and bones, as you see I have. These are the very things I spoke to you about while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses and the writings of the prophets and the Psalms had to come true. This is what is written. The Messiah must suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And in his name, the message of repentance and the forgiveness of sins must be preached to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And I myself bring the promise of my Father upon you. But you must wait in the city until the power from above comes down upon you. bless you and keep you. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. In the Holy Scriptures, God declared the Messiah would come to be the Savior of the world. The life of Jesus gives evidence that he is indeed the one the prophets spoke about. Isaiah prophesied that the virgin will conceive a child and will give birth to a son. Centuries later, the birth of Jesus was the fulfillment of that prophecy. The Holy Scriptures declared that the Holy One to be born would be called the Son of God. This means that Jesus was to be called the Son of God in a spiritual, not a physical sense. We see this in how he lived his life. He healed people from disease, forgave their sins, turned them back to God, and promised them a place in God's eternal kingdom. He offered himself as a sacrifice for sin in their place, and then rose again, conquering death. Jesus said, No one can take my life from me, I lay it down of my own accord. The life of Jesus not only fulfilled the writings of the prophets, but also confirmed the truth of God's holy word. The prophets declared, The word of the Lord is flawless. Your word, O Lord, is eternal. Jesus himself said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Jesus came to give us life in all its fullness. But when man disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, he chose to go his own way, and his actions separated him from the Creator. The Holy Scriptures declare that all have sinned, and the payment for sin is death. This means a spiritual death, eternal separation from God. 
But just as God provided a ram to die in place of Abraham's son, so he sent Jesus the Messiah to die in our place. His life, death, and resurrection restored the relationship between God and all those who put their trust in him. Now those who follow Jesus not only have their sins forgiven, but are saved from God's eternal judgment. They are assured of paradise and will live with him forever. It is this life and freedom from the guilt and power of sin that Jesus offers each person today. This does not mean following a religion, but choosing to have faith in Jesus, who says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. This means turning to God and trusting Jesus to come into our lives, to forgive our sins, and to make us what he wants us to be. It is not enough to intellectually agree with his claims nor to have an emotional experience. We receive him by grace through faith as an act of the will. When people are ready to become followers of Jesus the Messiah, they may speak to him in a simple prayer. Perhaps you are ready now to open your life to God. If so, you may join in the following prayer to him, silently, in your heart. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I confess and repent of my sins. I open the door of my life and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for forgiving my sins and giving me eternal life. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. As I become one of your followers. Amen. Jesus said about his followers, My sheep recognize my voice. I know them and they follow me. In order to experience the abundant life which Jesus promised, his followers talk to God each day in prayer and read or listen to his word. They tell others about him and meet regularly with those who love and follow him. Remember his wonderful promise. All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Lo, I am with you always even to the end of the world.